Hi, I'm Karen Grigg. I am the library liaison to the School of Public Health and Radiology. And we're going to talk today about how to conceptualize your research topic, how to construct the topic, strategies for finding information on your topic. The first step is you need to design your research question. And that sounds obvious, but it can be tricky. Uh, first of all, think about what's your situation. Um, the most obvious thing is start with something you're interested in. I've seen the difference when students approach me with uh, class assignments that they had no input in the topic and things that were genuinely curious about. So start with something that is of interest to you. And you want to confirm that your question is answerable. So specify or broaden the question if needed. I have had a student before that was looking for research that showed mathematical formulas that prove the existence of God. And that was something they were very interested in, but it's not something that's likely answerable in scholarly literature. Um, also, people will start with very broad topics, uh, like what are the causes of smoking? Too broad. Um, sometimes it's way too specific. Things like, I need to know about um, treating cancer in um, migrant workers in Cumberland County, North Carolina. So we can help with that, but think about what the level of specificity that you would need to find articles on your topic. And then revise and reconsider as you go along. Also consider confirmation bias. You don't want to go into a topic with um, the bias of only wanting that information that proves what you believe to be true. And think about how you'll break apart your question into components. We're also gonna talk for a moment about the PICO, PICO or PCOTS model for structuring research questions. Uh, this is really used a lot in medical research. It often applies in public health as well. Sometimes your topics are a little more multidisciplinary, but it, it's a, pro a good way to structure your research topic and really think about it. So for P, we talk about um, a description of the population or patient or problem. So it could be adolescents, it could be um, elderly women in nursing homes. Uh, it could be a problem like smoking. Um, your I and your E, you could use either one. It's an identified intervention or exposure. In pure medical research, a lot of times they're looking at one specific mode of treatment. Um, exposure would be, you know, like exposure to radiation or secondhand smoke. It could be that instead of an intervention, like what happens to people. And your, um, for the sake of this class, I know you all have talked a lot about determinants or contributors to a problem that would also go here. Sometimes you have a comparison, a classic medical research question might be, um, which is more effective in uh, successful outcomes, um, intervention A or intervention B. And intervention B would be your comparison. Sometimes the comparison is to offer an intervention versus not doing anything. So your comparison would be not doing anything. You want to think about out outcomes. What are the outcomes that you're looking for in terms of measuring the success of whatever it is or the, the problem? Uh, outcomes might be uh, smoking cessation. Uh, it could be um, rate of diabetes. Uh, there's usually an outcome that you want to have. And then T could be the time or duration of, of the study. You may have one, like over a two-year period, over 20 years. Um, or you might focus on a specific type of study, randomized controlled trials, uh, qualitative. And then S would be your setting in a nursing home, in schools. You're not going to have all of these for every question, but it's good to go down the list and see if you could identify those aspects of your topic. And for your team projects, not all of them will fall into the PCOTS model. It's good to take a look. It can help define parts of it, but they're not all classic PCOTS questions. Um, a common question for this class would be, what contributes to X health, health issue and Y population in Z setting and time period? So you can identify your X and your Y and your Z. Your topics are very multidisciplinary, um, meaning that they look at their... Um, in many different dis disciplines. So you may need to look at databases from different disciplines. You might have medicine, nursing, sociology, business and management, education, and others. And statistics and data are important to you for your topic. When you're building your background section, it's important to locate information that shows how 
prevalent the problem is. So here's how to locate information for your background section. Let's say you have a research question, what risk factors are associated with smoking? That's your first research question that you come up with. So the first thought is, is this a good research question? And what a lot of students will do is they'll go to Google and they'll literally type in what risk factors are associated with smoking. We got a couple of fact sheets or a fact sheet here, lifestyle risk factors. It's not a bad idea to look at um, .gov research. Uh, you could actually go into Google Advanced and then limit to the domain .gov and you can often find data and statistics that way. But for your articles, your scholarly articles, you're not gonna find them this way. And I've seen people go right into PubMed, which is the premier um, health sciences database of scholarly literature. And they'll literally type in what risk factors are associated with smoking. You'll see there's 64,000, over 64,000 results. And I guarantee there, there might be something in there that's worth it to you, but you're not gonna wade through that many and you'll see how bizarre some of them are. Um, so the first step is to look at your initial question. What risk factors are associated with smoking? Is that a good question? Well, it's kind of broad and it's very difficult to build out a search strategy for something that broad. There's no population, that you're not looking at a specific risk factor, uh, there's no geographic region. So you can improve your question by trying to narrow it to a specific answerable question. So here's an example of how one narrowed by population and geographical area. What risk factors are associated with smoking among youth in Ukraine? And then they added a risk factor. What economic factors are associated with higher smoking among youth in Ukraine? So you have a pretty specific, the first one probably is good. The second one definitely is specific. And then you start searching. Um, so the first thing then at that point is you need to identify the main concepts in the question. So I see for this one, we have risk factors, smoking, youth, and Ukraine. So I often will just make a list. And then try some test searches like risk factors and smoking and youth in Ukraine. And adjust the number of concepts if, if necessary. That might be too specific. It might not be specific enough. And then build out your keyword list and document or track your progress. So to build your keyword list, start brainstorming. You do a quick and dirty search using the keywords you started with and then look to the relevant articles you find. What keywords did they use? Go look at their abstracts, look at their bibliographies and the title. And if you see synonyms, um, add them. So you might find youth might be adolescents or teens or teenagers. Also, uh, look at spelling or other variations. If you were doing research on STDs, they might be in the literature as STI, so you don't want to just put STD. You might want to consider um, British spelling, center with an ER versus an RE, put them both in there, and include plur plural and singular forms, cat, cats. And then consider adding antonyms. This is a classic example. We have a lot of people here doing research on food insecurity. And they won't find that many articles just putting in food insecurity in their population and their, um, you know, the other limiters. But many of the articles will refer to a lack of food security or the um, amount of food security. So you want to make sure you add the term food security along with food insecurity. So you would have them together with or. Um, we're here, HSL librarians, to help with this process. And then sometimes your faculty uh, or your TAs can give you a list of synonyms for the concept that you're working on. So ask us. So for example, with this question, uh, for the concept of smoking, you have smoking, tobacco, cigarettes, cigarettes, um, young people, young people, youth, young adults, you know, you build those out, you do a search, and then you might find this article sharing tobacco and e-cigarette information predicting its occurrence and balance among youth and young adults. If you see any terms in there that you think need to be added back into your synonyms list, you can, like maybe you wanna put e-cigarettes in there, for example. Boolean logic, that is the way we search scholarly databases. It uses Boolean structure. That's why you can't type in a full question. So if you were trying to find information about cats, you might have cats or felines that will broaden your search. If you just put in cats, you might miss articles that refer to felines and vice versa. So that uses the Boolean um, connector or. 
if you were wanting information about, say, cats or felines that have um, distemper, you might do felines and distemper. That's going to narrow your search because all the articles about felines have to also cover distemper. Uh, we don't use not as much because sometimes you accidentally uh, weed out things you need. But, but for example, if you wanted research about cigarettes, but you do not want e-cigarettes, you could add not e-cigarette cigarettes to your search. You have to be careful because there might be articles that say in the abstract, unlike with e-cigarettes, comma, cigarettes, blah, blah, blah. You just nodded that one out. It won't show up. I'm not a big fan of not unless it's absolutely necessary. Um, so here we have teenagers and smoking. That would give you the narrow set. And then if you added the term vaping with an or between it, you would broaden it a little. So we have teenagers and either smoking or vaping. And you'll see that you will always wrap the or sets in parentheses. That makes sure that what needs to be the two synonyms, that they combine them together and do that first. And then they take that whole set and combine it with teenagers. And a lot of databases prefer all caps for your connectors. So we tend to do that. Most don't anymore, but it's, it helps your eyeballs also see uh, what you're doing. And then you take your concepts and you put them together with the word and. You use or to connect your synonyms. And then you use your parentheses to group your synonyms. Other tips, you can do a phrase search by adding quotation marks. So for example, young adults in quotations uh, will search for it as a phrase. You can put an asterisk after a root term, like SMOK, when the asterisk would give you smoke, smoking, smokers. Um, and then drop your terms line by line in the database and connect them with AND. So putting it all together, after doing much research here, um, you'll see that we have all our smoking terms up top. We have our AND, our young people terms after that, and Ukraine, and you'll notice the last one, I forgot the parentheses, but risk or risk factor. This can probably be perfected. You might go up to the top and add more into the cigarette area or young people, but this is like the first pass. Um, and in order to avoid errors, rather than doing one humongous nested search, we tend to put each subtopic in its own line in the database and then combine them. And then within each topic, make sure you separate the keywords with ORs and between each line use ANDs. So after testing the search, I kept finding more synonyms after looking at titles and abstracts. So Cigarilla was not in my original one. I added that in. Nicotine wasn't in there. I added that in. Um, you'll see that for Ukraine, I added or Ukrainian. Or you could do be fancy and use the truncation and do U-K-R-A-I-M with an asterisk, and that would give you Ukraine or Ukrainian. I saw a lot of articles that referred to population at risk, so I added that as another synonym. And that you do that over and over when you're searching. Think creatively. Sometimes you'll either find too many or you won't find enough. If you don't find enough, you might want to add broader categories. So if there wasn't much about just the Ukraine, you might look at the, for, just add in the term former Soviet bloc, because maybe um, the trend continues with all the former Soviet bloc nations, and you'll get more if you add that in as a, a synonym. Sometimes you look at parallel evidence. If the Ukraine is similar to Russia, you might add Russia as one of the synonyms. Um, building bridges. All your subtopics might not be present in all the relevant papers. Sometimes you have to do two at a time or three. At a, if you have four concepts, you might have to take them three at a time. And sometimes you have to make the case yourself. You have to build a, an evidence bridge. It's not just sitting out there, you know, for you. Also, for this particular project, consider gray literature or like not standard published scholarly journal articles. Not all the evidence will be there. Think about who's going to keep track of the background information you need. You might find resources at the CDC. You might find things at the state level, like state governments, local county governments, uh, dissertations. Those are all what we call gray literature. You want to keep track of your searches. You can set up a My NCBI account in PubMed and save them. You can create a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet. This is an example of a search strategy template that I tend to use for systematic reviews, which is way above and beyond what you're doing this semester. It's a fancy search, essentially. 
and I'm able to keep track of my terms that way. If you need help, please attend one of our library hosted SBHG 713 search clinics. We will have several of these in the semester. They will be posted in Sakai. We'll have multiple librarians on hand to be able to help um, entire teams. So check your Sakai site. If none of those work for you, do contact me at kgreg at email.unc.edu and there are many ways that we can get you help. Thank you.